Solar energy has great potential as a useful energy resource. It's available whenever the sun shines. In Australia, on a clear day, enough energy gets through the Earth's atmosphere from the sun to equal about 75 litres of petrol per person per day. That would be enough for each of us to drive a car about a thousand kilometres every day. But the problem is capturing the sun's energy. One way of doing that is with a solar pond. A solar pond is designed to capture heat energy from the sun in the water, but the pond must be carefully built if it's to work efficiently. In this solar pond, which is about two metres deep, the bottom layer of water is extremely salty, and salty water is denser or heavier than ordinary fresh water. The solar pond is made up of many layers of salty water, each layer a little less salty than the one below. At the top, the water is almost fresh. Now, the sun's rays penetrate through the clear water and are absorbed by the black plastic lining at the bottom, so the bottom, very salty layer of water becomes warm. Now, normally, warm water rises to the top and mixes with the cooler water, but in this case, the warm water is trapped at the bottom, getting hotter and hotter. It may get to a temperature of 80 or 90 degrees Celsius. Now, the water is then taken off by a pump, which is at the bottom of a well. The pump then pushes the water up and into a little shed. The shed contains a very special engine. It's an engine that's designed to produce electricity. The engine actually contains the liquid Freon, which is the liquid normally used in refrigerators. The hot water makes the Freon boil. The Freon vapour then builds up pressure, turns a generator, which in turn produces electricity. Now all of this is controlled by a computer. The computer not only checks the temperature of the water, but also measures other aspects of weather, such as the sun's radiation and wind speed and direction. The warm water, which has done its work with the Freon, is then returned to the bottom of the lake. The computer is used to check on temperatures. It measures air temperature, water temperature at intervals of five centimetres all the way to the bottom of the solar pond, and it also measures the ground temperature below. And the computer cleverly turns this information into graphs so that the people who run the project can see at a glance how efficiently the pond is working. The computer in Alice Springs is also linked to computers in a university thousands of kilometres away in Western Australia, where scientists are helping with the project. And the computer relates water temperature to heat energy from the sun and other aspects of weather. In this graph, you can see the temperature as you go down to the base of the pond, where it's almost 80 degrees. Now, the salt for the solar pond is actually produced right next to the pond by allowing heat energy from the sun to evaporate salty water from beneath the Earth's surface. And the solar pond requires care and attention to keep it working efficiently. PVC plastic pipes floating on the surface stop waves developing and so prevent salty layers from mixing. The alignment of these floating pipes must be checked regularly. The first solar pond built in this area was not like this one at all. It was of quite a different design. It had sloping sides and thin plastic lining. This was not as effective as it might be. The new pond has vertical sides and a much thicker lining of black plastic, making it more efficient at developing a very hot layer of salty water at the bottom of the pond. From this experiment being conducted by a small group of skillful and determined scientists and engineers, enough electricity is being generated to run all of the domestic lighting and appliances in a modern farmhouse. Before long, solar ponds and Freon engines will be providing electricity for entire small communities. In the years to come, you'll be hearing a lot more about solar pond electricity. <laughs>